Hi, I'm John Refrano, Senior Vast Trainer here for Boris TV, and welcome to the Boris Continuum Complete for Final Cut Pro 10 training. In this episode, we're going to take a look at creating Final Cut Pro 10 presets for BCC9 effects using Apple Motion. In a previous episode, I showed you a motion graphic with this white cloud fly through that you're looking at now. And I explained that while you don't have it listed in your presets for Final Cut Pro 10, that I would show you how to make one in motion. And that's what we're going to do for this episode. One of the great things about Final Cut Pro in Motion is that you can take all the power of motion and boil it down into just the parameters that you need to create an effect in Final Cut. And that's what we're going to do today with the BCC Particles 3D. So let's switch over to Final Cut Pro and see how I did this. Here's the project and we could just skim along and see uh, these white cloud fly through. I'll just play this through once. And so it's just a, uh, a background generated with BCC and a lens flare generated with BCC, and a title generated with BCC, and this nice fly through. So all of these were done completely with Boris Continuum Complete. Now you'll notice down here under BCC Particles, I have this white cloud fly through and I have this little custom area where I've created other effects. This was actually created in Apple Motion and then published to Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna show you how I did that. So let's start by going over to Motion. I'm going to hide the other windows. When you open Motion, it gives you the option to create a Motion project, which is kind of a standalone project, or you can create Final Cut effects, or generators, or transitions, or titles. So this is where it really gets powerful. We're going to create a Final Cut effect. I'm going to make sure it's set to my broadcast 72030p, and I'm going to click Open. Now, if you've never seen Motion before, let me just explain briefly how the interface is laid out. We've got three tabs on the top here for File Browser, Library, and Inspector. Then you've got your project that you're building up next to it, and a preview of the project. And I'm going to press Shift-Z to make that preview fit in the window. And then you have your tracks down on the bottom. Now because this is an effect, the effect source is already put in here. So this represents a slug for the actual source video that you're going to use in your Final Cut project. So all we need to do is drag and drop Particle 3D onto this. So I'm going to go to the library, I'm going to go to Filters, and then BCC Particles, and take Particle Emitter 3D and drag and drop it on the effect source. Then I'm going to move over to the Inspector window, and I want to load the preset that I'm going to use. Now you'll notice in Final Cut there are no presets. So it's really valuable to have motion because Boris ships with a ton of presets and you don't have to create all these things from scratch. And so it's great to always start with a preset. So I'm gonna take this white cloud fly through preset and load it into motion. And that's all I'm going to do. The rest of this is just showing you how to publish this to Final Cut Pro. You'll notice there's a lot of parameters that are grouped together. So there's a group for your render parameters, there's a little twist down group for your emitters, there's a twist down group for your particles, etc. Just tons and tons of parameters, but you don't have to deal with these in Final Cut. What you do is, you just take the parameters that you need and you publish them. So in working with the emitter, I want to be able to manipulate the birth rate, particle speed, and the particle lifespan. So I'm going to publish those parameters. All you need to do is click on the little down hour here and say publish. Then come to the next parameter that you want, particle speed, and say publish. And then we can go to the particle lifespan, and we say publish. So now birth rate, particle speed, and particle lifespan are going to show up in Final Cut. Now if you ever want to check which ones show up, you switch over to your project up here. And then make sure that you're on the project tab, publishing, and you can see birth rate, particle speed, and particle lifespan, that's what we've published so far. I'm going to click on our particle emitter to go back to the inspector. The other parameter that I might want to change is the emitter shape because you can get a lot of different effects by changing the emitter shape. So I'm going to publish the emitter shape. And then the only other thing I want to publish are the camera parameters. So we're going to scroll down. I'll close up emitter and I'll move down to built-in camera. And I want to publish the position, the field of view, the camera position. 
on the X, Y, and on the Z. And then the next three, tumble and spin and rotate. And that's all I really want to focus on. So now I'll switch over to project. And these are the parameters that you're going to see in Final Cut Pro 10 and only those parameters. So this is a great way of taking really complicated effects in Boris Continuum Complete and just narrowing them down to the few parameters that you most often use and then publish those and then you've got your own custom effect tailored to the work that you do. So to publish this all we need to do is save it. So I'm going to say File and Save and now it's asking me for a template name because these are motion templates that we're publishing to Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm going to call this White Clouds. The next parameter is the category. Uh, you can put it in existing category or make your own category. Down here you could say new category. I'm going to put it actually in the BCC particle category, but I'm going to do something different. My other one was actually in the category, which I did it that way just for the demo. What I like to do is create a theme and I've got a little custom theme and that's another way to have subcategories within the categories so that my custom templates are separate from the ones that ship with Boris Continuum Complete. So now once I say publish we should see a white clouds under BCC particles in the custom section so let me publish this. Okay that was it. Let's switch back over to Final Cut Pro You'll notice things have been refreshed, and if I go back to particles, I now have white clouds under custom. So that's the new motion template that we just published. Let me create a new project. I'm going to call it Custom Preset Demo. I'm going to start by going to the generators. I'll come to BCC Textures, and I'm going to scroll down to BCC Stars and drag that into my project and I'll hit shift Z just to zoom in for the duration of that clip. Now I'll go down to my solids and give myself something to put that white cloud fly through on. So I'm just going to drag and drop a gray background. Now I'll go back to my effects. Scroll down to the brand new white cloud that I just created. Drag and drop that on to that gray scale. And there it is right in the middle of the screen. So you can see the parameters that I published are the only parameters that you see. And all I did to move that down in space was actually change the camera tumble. Uh, just by a few degrees, I think I used 7 degrees, and that just tumbled the camera a little bit lower. And that was it. I left it as is. That's how we did the white cloud fly through. And there they are coming at us. Now if you wanted, you could change the particle speed, you could change the lifespan, um, you could even make it a a point instead of a box in which it becomes kind of a mist of particles coming at you. So you still have quite a bit of control but you don't have all those other parameters that you might not ever use. So I really think it's important for you to know how to use motion to take the Boris Continue Complete plugins and really tailor make them for your situation. In order to complete this graphic I'll go to BCC Lights. I believe I took the uh, blue lens flare and I drop that on the background and that gives us the lights in the background and then I'll just take another solid take the gray scale type Q to make a connected clip go to the effects click on BC 3D objects and drag extruded text up onto that From there, it was just a matter of changing the text. And I'll go quickly because we have several episodes where we go over 3D text. So this is Boris FX. I change the font to Denmark. I'll make it a little bit bigger and apply it. I'll scale it back a bit. We'll scroll down and increase the extrusion depth. I believe I made it 10 because I wanted it really deep. And then I changed it to use two materials. So we'll go to Material Mapping, 
we'll select two. I'll go over to my Boris FX textures, which I showed you how to create in a previous episode. And I have my metallic brush texture here. I'll go down to the texture well and click on it. And just apply that nice brushed face. And then finally, we'll change the color of the side to a paler blue. OK, all we have to do now is make the background transparent and then position it up where we want it in space. We'll bring it up. We'll make it a lot smaller, maybe 40. Bring it over a bit on the X. And then I rotated it just a bit on the Z. And maybe bring it up on the Y just a bit. Now to really sell this, because we've got this intense light here, I'm going to increase the light on the text. So I'm going to go to the first light. You scroll down. And I'm going to bring that intensity up to about 120. And right there, it just brightens it up so that it sells the shot. Right? It gives you the illusion that the light is actually coming from this star in the background. And that's all there was to making that graphic. Now let me show you how to do something a little bit more difficult, but it'll make your life a whole lot easier. What I want to do now is show you how to make a rig. So I'm going to come back down to my project and hit Command N for a new project. I'm going to call this Snow Demo. And you'll see why in a second. I'm going to go back over to Motion. We'll create a new project. This project will also be a Final Cut effect. I'll go to my library, filters, BCC particles, and this time I'm going to take BCC snow and drag and drop it down on the effect source. We'll go to our inspector, and you can see there are a fair amount of parameters in BCC snow as well. But what I'm going to do is link parameters together to make it much easier to use in Final Cut. So we have the snow amount which I can bring up and down and it'll create more or less snow. I have the snow speed, which will determine how fast uh, the snow is going to be arriving. And then down in the snowflakes, I have the size of the snow, which I can make bigger or smaller. What I'm going to do now is to create one slider that controls all three of these. Let me go back and get the default, and we'll start from here. I'm going to take the snow amount and I'm going to click on the little down arrow. By the way, you can also right click on the name here. And instead of saying publish, I'm going to say add to rig. A rig allows us to rig together several parameters at once. So I'm going to create a new rig and we can make a checkbox, a pop-up, or a slider. I'm going to make this one a slider. You'll notice up at the top here a new rig was created and it has the name slider. I'm going to double click on it to edit it and I'm going to call it Storm Intensity. So with this one slider, I hope to control the intensity of the storm. Now you'll notice there's this little blue dot here at the beginning and a blue dot at the end. What we can do is link the parameter value to the beginning and end so that this slider controls one or more parameters. So when it's down at the beginning, I'm going to bring this down to say 1. So that's our minimum storm intensity. And then when I come up to the max, I'm going to bring this up significantly, like perhaps, oh, 200. So I double clicked on it to really, really get a lot of particles going. But all that does is put more particles on the screen. It doesn't make them come down any faster. So as a storm intensifies, it usually snows faster. So I'm going to click on our BCC snow again and come down to my snow speed. And I'm going to add that to the rig. But instead of creating a new rig, I'm going to add it to the one we already have. And in particular, I want to add it to the storm intensity slider. 
So now that's connected to storm intensity. You can see there's a little joystick to show me that these are connected to a rig. Now I'll click on the storm intensity rig again and we'll set the next parameter. So when I'm at zero, uh, the storm intensity is going to be 20 for the speed. So maybe I'll drop that down to 10. And then when it's at 100%, maybe we'll bring that up to say, oh, maybe 40 or 50. Okay, so now when I bring it down, I've got these at their minimum. When I come back up, they're both at the maximum. And as I come in between, they interpolate in between. So now let's add our third parameter. I'm going to come back to BCC Snow. And the third parameter I want to control is the size of the snowflakes. So under snowflakes, there's size, and I'm going to click on that and say add to rig, and we're going to add it to snowstorm intensity. Now when I go back to my rig, at the minimum value, I want the size to be fairly big, because usually when it's snowing, it's snowing a lot slower in the beginning, and the flakes are a lot bigger. And then as the storm intensifies, it snows faster, and the flakes get smaller. So now we'll go to maximum intensity, and at maximum intensity, I'm really going to make those flakes get smaller. And you can play around with what the right values are. The concept here is that I'm creating one slider that's modifying three parameters, and then that's the one I'm going to publish. So let me do that now. I'm going to click and say Publish. So that parameter gets published. We'll go back to BCC Snow, and the only other thing I want to publish is this snow angle. So I'm going to take the snow angle and publish that. Then I'll go to Project, click on the Project tab, and look at what's being published. And I have Storm Intensity and Snow Angle, and I'm going to double click on that and rename it Storm Angle. And now I'm going to save it. So I'll just click Save. I'm going to call this snowstorm and we're going to put this in BCC particles but I don't have to I could have put it in a different category and for the theme I'm going to click my custom theme and then publish that now it's saying that it already exists because I created one earlier and so I'm simply going to replace it you've already seen that these things actually do get published now we'll switch over to Final Cut Pro and let's go take a look at our storm I'll take a generator, throw that into my project just to get something to put the storm on. I'll go back to BCC Particles. And we can see my snowstorm is there, and I'm going to drag and drop that on. And now if we switch to snowstorm, you'll see there's just storm intensity and storm angle. That's it. As I increase the intensity, you see the snowstorm start to increase. I can play with the angle. And let's just play this back. So there's lots of smaller flakes going very fast. If I decrease the storm intensity, we'll bring it all the way down. We'll play that. I get very few flakes going slowly. So let's stop and really understand what we've done here. In Final Cut Pro 10, Boris FX has given you a couple of templates under BCC particles, but there's so much more included in Boris Continue Complete. And since there wasn't a motion template for snow, we've gone into motion, we've built a snow template, we've given it two very simple parameters that make it extremely usable, and now you've got a custom preset for Boris Continue Complete, where anytime you need snow in your scene, you could drop it on, select the intensity of the storm, and you're off and running. You're moving on to other things. Well, that about wraps it up. Hopefully you've seen how you can take any of the BCC filters that are exposed in motion and publish them into Final Cut Pro 10 so that you could use them in your Final Cut Pro projects. If you need more information, go to BorisFX.com, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. Until next time, this is John Refrano for Boris TV. Thanks for watching.